Hey guys, I thought I'd take a minute and do a, just a real quick basic general information video on the components that are inside the electrical cabinet and how they relate to the wiring diagram that we'll be going over when I wire up the panel. The first item is our main disconnect and this is just a rotary type disconnect. It's basically has three different sets of contacts in here. This would be for like a three-phase panel, but we're going to only be using one set of contacts. I went I could have went with something a little simpler, but this is sort of what's used in the industry and if I decide later on to go with maybe a 220 VFD, I'll have the other set of contacts. Here it is shown mounted inside the panel. And here it is drawn on the wiring diagram. Our power comes in the main disconnect and it goes over to our main fuses. Here are the main fuse. Uh, one's going to be powering some outlets for our computer, coolant, and monitor. One's going to be powering our VFD and one's going to be powering our two power supplies. We have our terminal strip down here and this will be where we make all our connections. We have our transformer. Now this transformer has 110 volts coming in AC and 48 volt AC going out and if you look right here the little square item between the transformer and the capacitor that is a rectifier that converts the 48 volt AC coming out of the transformer into DC it then goes into the capacitor and the capacitor just stores that power so when you have high demands you'll be able to meet those demands if you're pulling a lot of amps for your stepper motors, uh, maybe you're rapiding your X, Y, and Z at the same time, uh, and you've you got a high demand on for your amperage draw, the capacitor will help alleviate that. Next to that, we have our tri-power power supply. This is a 5, 12, and 24 volt power supply. And here it is drawn on our wiring diagram. Next, we have our C2 contactor. This is just a cube relay. It's just, these are commonly called ice cube relays. Uh, has 110 volt coil. And here are the contacts for the relay and the coil drawn on the wiring diagram. Here is our main contactor, C1. This is an 18 amp contactor. There are actually three sets of contacts in here with an auxiliary set of contacts. It will energize the coil shown here on our wiring diagram which will close the contacts. There's three sets of contacts that will close. The dotted line represents the holding circuit. Those sets of contacts, when closed, provide power to the coil until the e-stop is pressed. We have one set of contacts that will energize our 48 volt transformer and another set that will power our tri-power power supply. Next we have our fuses. These are for our stepper motors. These are just the glass type fuses. Uh, there's four here and that's for the, a future axis. One for each X, Y, and Z. And here they are drawn on the wiring diagram. Though here are our stepper motors, X, Y, and Z. And I left a space here for a future. Inside our fuses, we have a solid state relay. I'm using this relay to turn on my coolant. Next to that we have our EMI filter 
and this basically just filters out noise on the power line and this will be in line with the power for our VFD now here is the EMI filter drawn on the wiring diagram and then here on the wiring diagram is our VFD and you can see that the power going into the filter goes from the filter to the VFD here's our VFD and next we have our C11GS breakout board uh, you can get these from CNC4PC uh, and here is our C11GS board on our wiring diagram and then last we have our braking resistor and here is our braking resistor mounted in our panel and here it is drawn on our wiring diagram That basically covers all the components that we're going to need uh, other than our motors. But here on the wiring diagram you can see our stepper motors and our spindle motor. Those will be connected through the top of the panel with aviation plugs and I'll get further into that uh, as we wire those up. But that's the basic breakdown of all the components inside the cabinet. And I hope that was helpful for some of you uh, who may not be familiar with reading wiring diagrams and dealing with these type of uh, electrical components. So that was just a quick overview and now we can move on to actually doing some wiring. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel by clicking on the button below. Thanks for watching, and most importantly, be safe.